Okay, so we've got to differentiate x squared e to the 3x plus 2 with respect to x. Well, the first thing I'd want to do is certainly not write dy dx because this is undefined. So what I'd encourage you to do is to say something like let and introduce some variable. And I'm just going to call it y, okay? Let y equal that. You can call it anything you like. Let z equal if you want. As long as you write dz dx afterwards. Okay, well we've got let y equal x squared e to the 3x plus 2. So what we have is the product rule here. We've got two functions of x being multiplied together. Quick reminder of the product rule, okay, that is if you've got y equals two functions of x being multiplied together, uv, essentially dy dx equals one of those functions, say u, times the differential of the other function, dv dx, plus, and then do it the other way around, v times du dx, okay? Now, whenever I've got the product rule to do, I must admit I don't write what u and v are, because all you've got to do is just take one of those functions of x, multiply it by the differential of the other function, and then do it the other way around. Okay, so what I'm going to have here is dy by dx. I'm going to go straight into this. So I'm going to just take x squared and then multiply it with the differential of e to 3x plus 2. Now to differentiate e to 3x plus 2, you've got to use the chain rule. And to do that, okay, the chain rule, just again as a reminder, is that if you've got dy by dx and you want to find it, it's dy by dt multiplied by, say, dt by dx. As long as you've got the same thing here and here, it's as if they cancel out and just leave you with dy dx. So if I was going to differentiate e to the 3x plus 2, let's imagine that I had let y equal e to the 3x plus 2. I would say t was the 3x plus 2. I would let t equal the 3x plus 2. So when it comes to differentiating this part, what I'd need to do is first of all do dy by dt. We've got y equals e to the t. Let's just put that down here, e to the t. Differentiate that with respect to t, it is e to the t, so we're just going to have e to the power 3x plus 2. But then you need to multiply by the differential of t with respect to x. t was 3x plus 2, so you just need to times it by the differential of this, which is going to be 3. Okay, so I'll put a 3 there. Put everything in brackets, okay? Then we do plus, okay, for the product rule, and now we just do it the other way around. I differentiate my x squared and multiply it by e to the 3x plus 2. So let's differentiate the x squared, that's going to be 2x, and we multiply it with the e to the 3x plus 2. And I'll put that in brackets. So we've got two terms here and I just want to clean each of those terms up. The first term would look better as 3x squared, 3x squared, then e to the 3x plus 2. And as for the second term, well, I could just l l remove the brackets, okay, and get plus 2x e to the 3x plus 2. And that's essentially it, okay? Now in part two, we're asked to differentiate another function, okay? And that function is cos of 2x cubed then over 3x. So how would I do this one? Well, again, I would certainly say let, okay? And i will call it y, let y equal that. And what we have here is the quotient rule because we've got a function of x on the top and a function of x below. So, do you know the quotient rule? Well, again, just a quick reminder, if you've got 
y equals u over v, where u and v are functions of x, dy dx equals the bottom of the fraction, v times the differential of the top, du dx, minus the top times differential of the bottom with respect to x, dv dx then, all over v squared, the bottom squared. Okay, so that's the quotient rule for you. So, let's see then how that works for this. And again, I won't write out what u and v are, okay? Just get straight on with it. So, therefore, we have dy by dx equals. So, according to the quotient rule, it's the bottom times differential of the top. So, the bottom is 3x, put that in brackets, multiplied by the differential of the top. I'm going to have to do this again by the chain rule here. Only this time, okay, if I write y is equal to the cos of 2x cubed, let's just write that in here, y equals cos of 2x cubed, I need to replace that with a t. So t is equal to the 2x cubed. So I've got y equals cos t. So when it comes to differentiating the top, I've got to do dy by dt first of all. So differential of cos t is minus sine t. So that will go in there as minus sine of what t was. Well, t was 2x cubed. So that's going to be 2x cubed put that in brackets and now we have to multiply it by the differential of what I nominated my t to be which was 2x cubed. If I differentiate this with respect to x dt dx comes out to 6x squared so I multiply that by 6x squared. So I've got to take care on that bit so that's the bottom times the differential of the top using the chain rule. Now it is minus the top times the differential of the bottom, minus the top, so we've got the cosine of 2x cubed. I'm going to put that in its own brackets, okay? Again, I would strongly suggest you do that, and then multiply by the differential of the bottom of the fraction. Differential of 3x with respect to x is simply 3. So that's the top then done. It's all divided by the bottom of that fraction squared. So it's 3x all squared. So all that's left to do now is just clean this up. So if we look at this first term, what we've got is 3 times the 6, which is going to be 18. We've got a minus here, so it's going to be minus 18. Then we've got x times the x squared, so that's x cubed. And then the trig function next, multiplied by the sine of 2x cubed. As for this last term, well, that's going to be minus 3 multiplied by the cos of 2x cubed. Okay? Could even put this in brackets. Okay, let's just put that in brackets. Don't have to do that, but there you go. And all of this, and make sure that your division sign doesn't just stop there because it would alter the meaning. This minus sign leaks over the edge. So make sure that you extend that division right out to there. Well, it's all over 3x times another 3x, which is 9x squared. And there you basically have it, okay? Although I suppose you could simplify this a bit further, do you notice that each of these terms is divisible by 3? So if you did carry on to do that, then this top term here would be minus 6x cubed, sine of 2x all cubed. And then here, this would just simply leave you with cos of 2x cubed and dividing the bottom by 3 gives us 3x squared. Okay? So that's an alternative answer. You could, if you wanted to, even take this further. 
you could take out a minus completely. If you did do that, then brackets round here and change this to a plus. But I'll leave it up to you anyway. Okay, 